This is the Tempest Universe, man. Hold on to your ass. You're in for a hell of a ride. For the love of Pete. It, it never fails. Like, as soon as I start the podcast, Bugs decides to crash into the door and to gas me up. I know that's his plan. That is the secret life of dogs that chase UFOs. And that's what he's going to do. He's been, he's been farting it up so bad today. Uh, welcome to Tempest Universe. I'm your host, Manny. And um, I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you guys made it. Good news. The podcast is now on Spotify. Um, Bugs, take your time. Uh, it's on iTunes and a few other places. So we're getting the word out. It's getting around, uh, picking up where UFO Buster Radio left off. Those are the good old days, man. UFO Buster Radio, shit. What a lot of history there. But got to keep moving. Got to pick myself up by my big girl panties and keep it going. Funny thing today. This afternoon, I was like, uh, I was glued to YouTube as SN9, Starship Serial Number 9, did its uh, its static test. It fired up the three Raptor engines. Now, the rumor is, being that today is mostly about space, the rumor is that uh, it Friday is the day. Friday or Saturday, though the county... Down there in Boca Chica has not yet released the road closures, so we don't really. So we're not sure because usually they'll give one date and then they'll give two backup dates, and that's not available yet. But um, successful, the fucking thing didn't blow up. That's always a good thing when you're doing rockets, right? Your shit doesn't blow up, so you're good to go. It's fantastic. So hopefully, hopefully, for fuck's sake, bugs, really. Trying to do a podcast here. Anyway, he's going to keep on. Hey, he's like kicking things off his bed now. Listen to this madness. Listen to it. Now he stopped because I'm talking about him. Anyway, so hopefully by Friday we might see SN9 do a uh, 12.5K uh, launch. And uh, we'll see what happens. There's so many new ideas coming out of SpaceX to make sure... That this time, we don't lose the fucking rocket. Which is, you know, who fucking cares, really? You've got so many sitting in the high bay, sitting in the background. I think they're up to like SN15 or 13 or 14 or some shit like that. Um, There's so many there. Blow the fuckers up. Who cares? You got plenty in the back. What you gonna do? SN9 survives. What are you gonna do? Park it somewhere? You know, what? No. Nobody cares. Blow it up. Just make sure that the final version, he's still trying to get into the damn bed. You just got to make sure that the final version is the one that you want. Don't blow that one up, because that would lead to some serious repercussions. Uh, Anyway, I'm glad you guys are here. I've got a lot of uh, intro clips that the Asgardians are submitting. So this weekend, I'm going to catch up and put those all to... I'm telling you, we have enough clips here to last us through uh, springtime when um, we might get out of this whole uh, coronavirus shittergate thing. So um, it, they're, they're funny as hell. You guys are going to love them when you hear them. And you are more than welcome to uh, send some to the podcast. The easiest way, of course, is going into Discord, become a member, become an Asgardian, and uh, submit it through there. Or you can just email me. The uh, stuff is in the description, I hope. I don't even know anymore. It's just nuts. So, that's where I'm at right now with SpaceX. Um, I don't even think I have an article on SpaceX for today. But, one more crazy thing. Elon Musk, well, two more things. So, he's he's getting rid of all his property in California. For fuck's sake, he was serious. He's leaving California, and he's moving to Texas. But then he did some other crazy-ass tweet talking about... He um he's not gonna own a home anywhere. He's gonna be a fucking hobo. Like the second richest man on the planet is I don't know, is he gonna set up shop in Boca Chica and live in one of the commercial buildings? I don't understand. But he's sold like three properties already in California. He's getting the fuck out of there. He really I don't know what he's gonna do about the weed situation, so let me just let you know right now, Elon. Recreational weed is not legal here. So I don't know how you're going to come up with your good ideas. I have a feeling like 
the uh, the dry spell of marijuana is going to mess up your genius. So you might reconsider this. You know, maybe don't just uh, move too fast to leave California yet. You're going to have to go back there to get some brain power off of the, uh, the local uh, dispensaries. Um, you'll just have to, maybe if you wait like a year or two, I mean, that's a trend, right, in the United States. You know, recreational stuff is going crazy, like nuts. I mean, there was one state that reported in one year it made a billion fucking dollars. This is the stuff we talk about in uh, the Tempest universe. Because the universe is crazy. It's stormy. It's fucked up. And we'll talk about that, along with UFO, aliens, and whatever else happens. And um, I've committed every episode to have one weird story at the end. <laughs> we got we got a good one today. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Well, anyway, let me just say hello to the guys who are in the live chat right now. We got GameVit, we got Pucky Fretch. Uh, Fretch. Oh, God. See, Bugs, you're distracting me. I go close the door now because it's wide open. Uh, Fresh from South Africa. Great trip, great pictures. Again, if you're not on Discord, you'd never know that Pucky was in the middle of the Serengeti and he was, you know, stroking the the cats, the big cats, by the way. Uh, also, what's up to, uh, let's see, we got The Norm is back. Another member of the Asgardians on Discord who has submitted, along with Gavid, who's also on, some uh, some uh, tracks, some clips to put into the intros. And also uh, Dre and Davina's probably in the background somewhere snoring. Um, yeah, welcome back, fellas. It's time to get this party started. So we're going to start this first uh, musical track because that's what we do to uh, break up the monotony. So let's get it.
You know, I've always had this fear. And it, I don't think it's a fear, but I've always, like, wonder, like, how would I react if I walk into a place, you know, let's say I walk into Domino's, I'd be like, can I get a large pizza with pepperoni? You know, and all of a sudden they're like, do you talk about UFOs? Like, I, it freaked me the fuck out, right? If someone actually recognized me from what I say or what I do. Bugs is, he already fell asleep during the damn song. He's already snoring. Um... Yeah, that would freak me out. So I've always wondered about how I would handle that. And uh, there's this guy that I watch on YouTube. He's called the Royal Jordanian. Yeah, he rides motorcycles through London. I'm sure a lot of people who listen in the UK know about the Royal uh, Jordanian. Uh, but there was one video where he felt really bad because he was like, he was at a stop sign. And these uh, these kids from college, you know, they came up to him. And they're like, excuse me, sir. Are you the Royal Jordanian? And he's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and then he felt bad, and then he admitted who he was. I think that's what I'm going to do. That's, <laughs> I'm just going to fucking lie, and then I'll be like, then I'll feel bad, you know, because they're probably a listener, and uh, not a super n- listener like uh, the Asgardians, but still, you know, just a regular listener, and they just happen to freaking memorize my dad's voice, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Listen, today is the uh, space and science thing, so that's what we're going to talk about today. I really tried to, I thought about adding like alien shit because there there was like one story about this pristine solar system that had like six fucking planets in it. Who fucking cares? We got like 30. We just don't like half of them because they're too small. Uh, Perseverance. Folks, it's time to get your widget on your damn smartphone to have a countdown. Because Perseverance is going to crash land on Mars. It is It is almost there. 53 million miles are left to go. Yes, as of January the 5th, that's the count. I mean, it's going to be there in no time. We're in January, February, mid-February. They're saying that about February 18th, this fucking rover... It's going to land there, and, um, you know, <sighs> it's really hard to talk about these because, let's be honest, let's pull up a chair. Um, the issue with, uh, like, rovers and shit like that is that for the longest time, we've been battling the idea of whether or not there is active life on Mars. Because, like bugs, something's been farting up there because this methane goes nuts in a, a bit of a cycle right it's not like constant farting like bugs it's in a cycle right i would love for him to take a break you know spare me some of the gas but uh maybe i have to send him to mars for that to happen but there there are signs there are signs that there even if it's a fucking amoeba we know something's going down on mars nobody wants to fucking admit it because they don't want to look like assholes there is nothing worse than a scientific asshole, I'm telling you. But it is what it is. So we have another rover. It's the twin of Curiosity, uh, Perseverance. And about February 18th, and actually NASA, you know how those point dexters are. They've got it down to about 3.30 Eastern, <laughs> uh, for fuck's sake, um, is when it's going to make touchdown on Mars. Now... There's 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 the problem, right? Because this is why people are scared shitless about these things. Because it takes about 10 fucking minutes for you to get a signal from Mars to the planet Earth. So, it's basically like if you're into video games and you have a shitty Wi-Fi and your internet fucking sucks. And you notice that people are skipping. Like, the guy, your, your opponent is there one time and all of a sudden he's not even on the screen anymore because he's down like three levels. That's that's basically what it is for you gamers. It's a shitty ass connection, and so when this thing this thing has to be pre-programmed to get this landing right, because it only has one opportunity to get it done. So February eighteenth, Central Clock is going to land in the Jazeera crater. Now uh, to go back to what I was saying about life on Mars, 
Every other article that you read about perseverance is about it looking for ancient life. No one gives any fucks about ancient life. So what? The shit's dead. Are you serious? How many people go and look up their aunt that died? You know, not even their fucking aunt, their great aunt. Oh, I had a great, great aunt named Jezebel. Let me go freaking go to her tomb and take her the fuck out of there because I want to see what kind of life she had. No. NASA, no. Nobody cares about ancient life. Nobody cares about what the fuck died three million years ago. We want to know what is there now. This is what I don't understand. For decades, there's been, you know, glimpses of life on Mars. And for fuck's sake, we still we still keep sending shit up there to look for shit that died a long time ago. Are you fucking serious? You need to look for COVID-45. That's what these rovers should be doing. And to get back to my original point, some articles say that the rover is going to look for shit now. Some articles say it's looking for ancient life. You know, we've got ancient aliens on cable. It runs on it. You can repeat that shit on Netflix. We don't need to spend billions of dollars on a uh, Volkswagen-sized rover to do the same thing. Come on. We like seeing the guy with the hair. We don't need a uh, Volkswagen Beetle to tell us that there was life a long time ago on Mars. You'd have to be a complete idiot to think that there wasn't. Just think about it. Come on. Anyway, so there you go. February 18th, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, 12.30 p.m. Pacific Time. It's got to go down. Hopefully, um... Hopefully not hard. Uh, the weird thing, well, I guess it's weird. I, I, I was actually going to try to download this for the podcast today, but I said, no, I, I why bother? Uh, but there's actually JPL released sound recordings from uh, Perseverance, because the shit's on, right? The shit is just, it's not just going like dead and then all of a sudden they, they uh, click the thing on. It's on. It's listening. And so they played the recordings of Perseverance going through space. And some of its components, you know, working and shit like that. Apparently, it's got like a heater on. And so you hear the heater noise running, you know, trying to keep the shit warm. Because space is cold and dark as hell. Uh, Right now, Perseverance is heading to Mars at 51,000 miles per hour. Uh, I know some of you draconians like uh, kilometers, but I'm not going to do that because it's not in the article. And I don't have time to take up my phone to figure it out. So, you guys do the math, but get ready, get the widget, and it's coming your way. Uh, In this article that's linked in the description, there's a few kind of demos that they did for Perseverance that you can look at just to see, you know, how crazy it's going to be if it splatters all over Jazeera Crater. (laughs) That would be crazy if that's what goes down, if this thing just, you know, uh, for fuck's sake, just commits... uh, you know, the final act. Uh, also, there is a little chopper helicopter attached to this thing on the bottom that it's literally going to give birth to on Mars. And, uh, you know, science is hoping that it will at least last a few minutes because um, they don't think it will. But could you imagine if it actually works? Fuck, it would be amazing. We could send, you know, flying shit now to Mars. Like, it doesn't have enough shit that's been littered on it already. The link is in the description for this news article, if you even care. So check it out. Otherwise, let's get over to uh, our next track for today. You walk in head high and you keep on saying It doesn't matter anyway But when it's turning dark and it's getting late you tell me that you want to stay So you call me when you're getting lonely Yeah, you call me when you're getting lonely And I'll be there, cause you're not the only one No, I feel the same as you do It's a lonely, lonely place when you're not with me It's a lonely, lonely 
closer than this But you don't need to answer right away Baby, you know I can't wait So you call me when you're getting lonely Yeah, you call me when you're getting lonely And I'll be there, cause you're not the only one No, I feel the same as you do It's a lonely, lonely place when you're not with me It's a lonely, lonely place when you're not with me It's a lonely, lonely place when you're not with me It's a lonely place, it's a lonely place, yeah It's a lonely place, it's a lonely place, yeah It's a lonely place, yeah It's a lonely place It's a lonely place, yeah Somebody asked me the other day, it's like, uh, I'm going to try to do like a real nerdy voice. It's really hard because it kind of hurts because of the vodka. Um, they're like, a, why do you drink when you're doing a podcast? For fuck's sake, why wouldn't I? I can't drink and drive. Are you serious? Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> Now, the next story is, uh, it's really a story of hope. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I really, I hope they make it. I hope they get this done. Virgin Orbit is going to launch their first space flight January 10th. Finally, maybe, I don't know, maybe. Like, when you, when you hear people say, you know, somebody's getting a vote of no confidence, for fuck's sake, Virgin Virgin Orbit, you get a vote of no confidence. I mean, they went as far as blaming COVID-19 for them not being able to get their shit right. Come on. Like, you know, most of the world freaking survived not having toilet paper during Shittergate. You should be able to get this rocket going. I'm just saying, for a friend. Uh, This uh, article is coming from Space.com. So apparently, launch demo 2. You guys already know, who listen to UFO Buster Radio, I have a thing with uh, launches being called demos because something is bound to go wrong. Thanks, Bugs. But Bugs understands, though his farts are not demos. They're the real deal. Um, Virgin Orbit, on the, uh, what what are we looking at? January 10th, is looking to try the second attempt to lift off from Mojave Air and Spaceport in Southern California. Um, between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern to get this rocket going. Now, sadly enough, it is not Spaceship 2. Yeah, Uh, this article is a letdown just in that regard because initially they were saying that early in the year, uh, Richard Branson himself was going to jump on Space uh, Spaceship 2 in his... uh, you know, tight jeans, his skinny jeans, and his uh, fabulous hair, uh, you know, with the goatee and all, looking really fabulous, on Spaceship Two, you know, to be part of that launch. Of course, we know Spaceship Two is nowhere in the park right now, but uh, this is Launcher One. So Launcher One was put together in order to launch, you know, little uh, tiny CubeSats, you know, those little... Satellite, little boxes and shit. By the way, Japan is doing something smart. They're making these CubeSats out of fucking wood. (laughs) Uh, You can't write this shit. 
uh, you know, they're concerned about space being all all junctified. So they're making the outside of the CubeSats made out of wood. Probably bamboo, just to be honest. But, um, yeah, for fuck's sake. But anyway, Launcher 1 is going to uh, basically try to take off. It's going to be launched from Cosmic Girl. And um, we'll see what happens. The last time that they attempted the demo one, the initial one, um, what happened was that there was a, a problem, right? So the thing took off, and there were there was issues with the rocket, the uh, first stage engine, um, and so they had to abort. Yeah, they had to terminate the flight uh, because the propellant line ruptured. And listen, that's fantastic. You know, if you can make that shit just abort, fantastic. We don't want to blow up half of Southern California with your funky little rocket, cargo rocket. Come on. Save the world. Save the cheerleaders, save the world. So January 10th, it's going to go down. They really need a win, let's be honest. Like, I've talked about this before, how, you know, Richard Branson was like the fucking cowboy, you know? He was doing all kind of crazy shit, promoting his brand, jumping off of cliffs and shit, airplanes, you know, really fucking with people's minds and his company. And now it's like they're struggling. Virgin Galactic, Virgin in general is just like struggling. They need a win. We need to see funky ass looking Spaceship 2 where all the portholes, you know, take off. We need that bitch to hit... Low orbit. We need launch demo two and this uh and this launcher one to get somewhere. Otherwise, could you imagine on Saturday all the people that invested in this, they're gonna be watching this, and if this fucking rocket does not take off, on Monday their stock is gonna be in the shitter. It'll be shitter gate two, to be honest. There's that vote of no confidence. So I hope. I hope and I, and I'm not really going to pray or anything like that because I ain't got that kind of time. But I really hope that on January 10th, Sunday, that this Launcher 2 and Cosmic Girl get the job done. Now, does that affect us in any way? I don't know. Some of you might have plans for a CubeSat that you need to put into space. And you need to contact Branson to put it up there. But for fuck's sake, no one's going to put their shit in that rocket until this thing actually works. So we'll see what happens. And again, I really think that they need to stop naming these missions demos. I really think it's bad luck. It really is. Don't call it demo. You know, call it hashtag FFS. Call it hashtag no fucks given. Do something like that. 4.2 far or bust. I like that one a little better. But please, stop naming these things demos. I, I just hope that when they shoot up Spaceship 2 and they put those guys, you know, those test uh, those test pilots, I think there's two of them that are going to be in the first one. Please don't call it a demo. That's scary shit. Like, I don't understand why anyone, I don't care if you're a space jockey and you've been to space hundreds of times, when somebody calls that shit a demo, that's it, I'm done. Call me when the first real mission shows up or change the name of that shit. Because it sounds like I'm going to burn up in space. I'll be honest. That's just the way it is. Um, So we'll see what happens. If it is successful, hey, listen. I think they are well on their way to getting Spaceship 2 to where it needs to be. But uh, they need a win in there. They need a win in there somewhere. It's just uh, a fucking sad state of affairs, to be honest. Um, Now here's a weird thing, which I've never seen this before. But apparently these CubeSats are basically going to be, if they ever get the shit going, I know I might be getting ahead of myself, in sun-synchronous orbit. Fuck, I never heard of CubeSats going in that orbit. But, you know, I'm just a regular guy. I'm a blue-collar blue guy. I don't know these things. But it's the first time that I see anything being launched in sun-synchronous orbit. But I'll have to catch up on that eventually. And maybe bring it back to you guys to see what you think about it. But uh, hopefully, no termination. We get this shit done. Leave Arnold where he needs to be. Hey, don't fucking scream at me. Where's you the dumb money? Fuck you. Look at you. With your fucking 48% body fat. And- Arnold, don't terminate. Don't terminate Virgin Galactic. 
we need this launch. So let's get it. By the way, this next track is for you people in Texas who like Spanish music. I know some of you are going to tune off or fast forward, but for fuck's sake, here it goes. I have a theory about our Tempest universe. And that is, uh, it's it's um, it's crazy as fuck. And the thing is that we are in our little micro universe here on the planet Earth, right? And so we're expanding like fucking roaches and ants. We're just like, we're going everywhere, right? So we're expanding like crazy, you know. And um, fuck, we're, there's going to be a space problem. There really is. So many countries are trying to get to space their own fucking way, their own time and money, and no one's got real fucking rules. There's not no real rules for this, right? Because as far as we knew, low orbit was just the shit. That's where we wanted to go. We did it. Fine. We're done. But um, it's a it's a problem because every country is kind of representing their own fucking self. You know, it used to be there was a lot, a lot of international joint missions. That's what the ISS was. But the shit has a fucking hole in it. Nobody cares about it. They were ready to just give the shit out to commercial enterprise. Let them deal with it. You know? Then we found out that there's dead body parts in it. Yeah. Yeah, Scotty. Scotty's remains are in it. He's fucking up the ISS. I'm telling you, it's haunted as fuck. So we got the story, because my thing is, there's going to be, there's going to be problems, to be honest. There's going to be problems in space, and we have China's Tianwen 1 spacecraft, um, apparently headed towards Mars as well. How the fuck did this get away from me? I don't even remember this thing taking off. I didn't see any news stories about it, but, you know, it is what it is. On February 10th, 
this Tia Wen one is going to land on Mars. It has. <laughs> Uh fuck. It's a two-part thing. There's something about the Chinese when they do the space shit that they'll put, like, the ten stages and shit. Like, it's like Transformers coming out of those fuckers, you know, doing all kind of stuff in space. We don't got that. We just throw the bitch down there and hopefully it bounces right. So the Chinese have this uh, spacecraft that's heading out there. It is actually 5.15 million miles away from Mars. Uh, as of January 3rd. A little bit closer than, you know, Perseverance. But for some reason it's going, I guess it's going slow as fuck. Because Perseverance is like 51 million miles away. The bitch is going to be there in mid-February. And this Chinese deal is going to be there like 8 days earlier. But it's way closer than Perseverance. So I don't know. Who knows how, what the fuck they're using to make this thing get there, but apparently it's not fast enough. So, China, check your engineers, because that shit is terrible. Um, now, this thing, this uh, rover, which uh, apparently um, has no name. It's like the no-name rover. It uh, weighs about 530 pounds. Really light. Not a VW. It's not a Volkswagen they're dropping on that shit. It's five. It's small. Made in China. It's tiny. For you guys who like uh, draconian math, 240 kilograms, solar powered. Um, for fuck's sake, what is wrong with this story? Oh, I see what it is. Jeez Louise, they're not really sure where it's going to land. Um, but the actual rover is called Taiwan 1 rover, and it's going to look at the soil characteristics. I mean, somebody's got to do that shit. And potentially, the water ice distribution, and also things that have to do with the subsurface uh, using radar. All great things. What about life? What about life? Does no one in China care about life? Is this what it is? No one fucking cares about life? hi yeah. Nobody cares about life anymore. Yeah, that's just crazy. So, no. So, we're, we're not going to know. Exactly what's on this Taiwan one, whether it's looking at uh, life at all, it's not mentioned in the article. Probably not mentioned in anything that they put out to the general public, because they like to live in secret. But they're testing the soil. They're testing water ice. There is no way. I guess I don't understand what the fuck is going on, you space-faring countries. You've been dealing with the question of life for so long, fuckers. Somebody put some of those millions of yen into figuring out what the hell is alive out there. It's just that simple. Why can't we do that? Put a mic, put a fucking microscope on that bitch and, and let it work. We're not getting that. But again, China's not going to tell us if that's what they're doing. But they are going subsurface. They are looking for water ice. It's got to be leading somewhere, right? Then that's basically life. If there's water, according to the folks here on this planet, there's life. So we'll see. Will they tell us there's life? I don't know. Probably not. Just like the guys in Japan, you know, they got this uh, Hayabusa 2 stuff going down. They got this uh, rocks. All they showed us was like leftover fucking charcoal. There are millions of houses in Texas that have charcoal in their backyard sitting in their grills. But the fuck did you travel all the way to Hayabusa, uh, you know, all the way to that uh, that uh, asteroid just to bring back charcoal? I could have given you that. I got plenty of it. Again, will they release what they find? We'll see. Because, I mean, for fuck's sake, they, they could have told us already. I don't think it takes that long unless there is a real mystery that they need to find. In that case, we'll let Scooby-Doo go over there and Shaggy and figure that shit out. You know, Japan. Anyway, so China is uh, getting ready to launch. And here's the thing. I'm sorry, getting ready to land on Mars. Um, Again, here is a war. There is a space war. Now everybody's going to Mars. And you know, it turns out that this is the very first mission that uh, China has uh, to land on Mars, the rover setting up. Usually, they've you know they've gotten in on the whole you know international thing, 
in order to get some testing done and get some information. But they're doing this on their own. They said, fuck are you. That's what they said. We don't want to deal with your stuff. We're doing this ourselves. So that's why I said, if there are some discoveries, we may not know about it. But again, they could claim, like Russia claimed Venus, they could claim Mars as the Chinese planet. Very possible. We'll find out. Uh, but again, space wars here. Who's going to claim Mars first? Can Elon Musk get his uh, starship ready in time to prevent any other country from taking over, you know, Elonstonia? That's going to be the new name for Mars. Elonstonia. I don't know. But I feel like he's going to go to Mars and claim that shit for himself. That basically is what the end game is. They'd be like, screw you, all you guys. Fuck you, it's my planet. Jeez Louise. That's where we're at right now. The link to this is in the description. By the way, the image for this podcast is actually an image of Perseverance. Those wheels on that thing are pretty nice. Let me tell you, I would love to have that on my truck. Um, I'm in Texas, so I have a truck. So, check out the links for this one. You get more information about this, uh, this rover... There's apparently going to beat Perseverance to Mars. I feel like I feel like this this space war is coming to fruition. It really is. We'll just see what happens cuz uh, it is anybody's guess at this point. My breath away A young and pretty You wasn't just a dream The next day You called me up You told me I'm your little buttercup You came over And you fell into my arms Well I know what I feel Please tell me Your love is real I admit the vodka is pretty good today, to be honest. I don't even smell bugs. That's how good. Like, you know you're drinking good vodka. Well, you don't, you like, 
can't smell stuff. You can't hear stuff. You can't even see shit, to be honest. Uh, this is our weird story for today because the Tempest universe is that. It is fucked up. Like, you think that COVID-19 was a dumpster fire. I know you do. I know you think it was like the worst fucking year ever. Can't we get rid of 2020? No, it's fucked up every year. It really is. The The universe is shitting on you constantly. And sometimes a turd might miss you. It'll miss you, but it'll land on your neighbor's house. Or it'll land, a, you know, a county over. The big universal turd of life just, just splats down on them. And crazy shit happens because it's Tempest Universe. This last article is our weird article for today. Man actually asked a judge to approve trial by combat with his ex-wife. <laughs> I, it's really hard to like to be like, oh, that dude is fucked up, or say, damn, that's a good idea. And then, you know, I'm not women hating, you know. For ladies, too, you know, sometimes you get involved with an asshole and you want to like, you know, take out the big uh, machete and go to town. It goes both ways because it's crazy. Uh, this comes out of Iowa. Uh, believe it or not. Well, actually, the guy <laughs> um, is initially from Kansas. So he was battling his wife in court, his ex-wife, to uh, you know add insult to injury. Uh, David Ostrom, O-S-T-R-O-M. It kind of sucks that he put his name in here because it makes me feel like he's fake. Um, so basically... He uh, he was losing the battle against his former wife and uh, the divorce attorney. They were eating his ass alive. They were like bending him over and giving him the what for like they were aliens without the suit. And so he's like, fuck it. Fuck it. I've, I've, I've had it. I've had it. So he decides to uh, go to the judge and say, hey, judge, I got a great idea. Check this out. What if... You know, and I'm just thinking out loud. You know, what if... Um, we just have like a uh, a battle here. Me and her. And uh, what I'll do is I will go. And I will either find or forge my damn self some katanas. And uh, we will go to war to see who wins this case. And he says, you know what? And I'm a fair man. I'm so fucking fair that I will let her attorney, if he so would wish to volunteer as tribute, and I will battle him myself instead. What a generous man he is. Of course, the judge was like, you know, it was like, what the fuck is he going to do? What is he going to say? What the hell? What? The, I mean... I would have been shocked. And I don't know the judge is sitting there still wearing his, uh, you know, his uh, Santa Claus thong. Just off of Christmas and shit. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck is going on here? What did I just hear? So he's like, well, you know, I can't, uh, yeah, no, I can't really rule on this uh, until we have a real fucking case in front of me. So, <laughs> so he didn't say no. He didn't say yes. Uh, but basically he says, you know, un and this is the judge himself talking, until the proper procedural steps to initiate court proceedings are followed, this court will take no further action concerning any motion, objection, or petition filed by either party at this point. So he's like, I know he went home. Come on, get the fuck out of here. This judge went home, was looking up the law. He's like, is this illegal? I mean, can he do it? I mean, really? Like, he could make history right now if he let this guy try to chop up his ex-wife. This, this is where we're at right now. We're, like, going backwards. We're going backwards into, like, the caveman days. We're going backwards with the Roman days, you know? Just put a a nice thing on her head, that, uh, like a like a Greek helmet, a Roman helmet, and just, you know, take her down to the middle of the court and... See what happens. Get your katanas out and go to town. Let the best man or woman win. Or attorney for that matter. I could just imagine the, the look on their faces. When he actually presented this to the judge. That is the Tempest universe we're in. 
COVID-19, are you serious? Can you imagine the next time you get sued, somebody comes out with a freaking katana or a machete talking about, we're going to settle it this way, buddy. This is the way it is. And actually, uh, the guy is from Kansas, but um, it turns out that it was the Shelby County Court that uh, heard this case out of uh, Iowa. So there you go. That's the way it is. You know, keep yourself uh, <laughs> trim, you know, do some workouts. You know, may believe you're in that ninja show where you're trying to compete because the next time you go to court, your ass might have to go in like a gladiator, you know, basically. Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, go to town. And apparently that he's... Con- uh, <laughs> the guy doesn't stop. David Ostrom continues to file more petitions because according to him, this is what he wants to do. He wants to confront the pair on the field of battle where he will rend their souls from their corporal bodies. For fuck's sake, this is really happening in the United States. That is the Tempest Universe for you. Don't be afraid to embrace it because shit's wild and crazy out there to the point where it's, uh, uh, where you would need two bottles of vodka just to understand it all. It may be some hashish on the side. I thank you guys for listening. Please be sure to follow, share, talk to your granddaddies, your grandmamas, your kids, your cousins, your uncles, even go to the local burial ground and talk to strange cadavers about the Tempest universe because we got to get this podcast going. And the only way it's going to happen is with your support. I thank you for listening. It's time to get the hell out of here. And uh, we'll be back soon. Not going to say when, but soon. But don't forget, January 15th, Chris Garcia, the psychic, will be on the Dark Horde podcast. And uh, we're going to pick his brain about a lot of things, especially about the world being so fucked up. Ciao.